uh, in terms of online, you mean like Facebook ads or things like that? Yeah, social media is a, is a troublesome spot for us. Um, it's hard to know where to start and where to end. Um, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not inclined to try to regulate Twitter. Um, I know there are some, we don't have foreign bots, I don't think, involved at, at our level. Um, no, one's, no one has ever brought that up to me. Um, but I would mention, by the way, just to give credit where credit is due, although Ellen has, has played a large role in this, it was really Ann Ravel uh, who's from California, who was a former FEC commissioner, that's the one that first sounded the alarm on this. Uh, and uh, Ian, Ian basically left the commission in frustration because they really couldn't get anything done. Um, we require, obviously, disclosure of expenditures. So if you take out a Facebook ad, we're going to get disclosure. Um, but in terms of regular social media, I don't think we've seen very much uh, where I would be worried. And certainly, I would be more worried if I got complaints, and I haven't had any complaints. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So, is there any noteworthy contribution or ex uh, an expenditure data that OCPF does not track? Well, it depends on who considers what noteworthy, I guess. Okay. Um, I don't think so. I mean, we try to capture the entire playing field of what's being raised and what's being spent. Um, I don't know if we're always successful. And I'll give you an example. One of the systems that we have um, in terms of disclosure is called the depository system. And banks are involved. And all activity is supposed to go through the bank, through that bank's checking account. If it doesn't go through the account, we're not going to capture it. And we've had a number of cases where we've uh, brought people in and said, you know, your account says you've only spent 200 bucks, but there are signs all over the county. What's up? And they'll be like, oh, I, yeah, I spent 20 grand at the printer. Yeah, but it didn't go through your account and it wasn't disclosed, so we need to talk about that. But that's got nothing to do with coordination. So did you earlier say that a priority, a state priority, a priority could contribute uh, any amount in kind? In kind, sure, yeah. So does that mean a priority could, could give you 10,000 signs to fill? Yes, absolutely. Okay. If you look at, if you look at um, take a look at the year-end reports for any statewide, well, any gubernatorial statewide candidate over the last 12 years, roughly. And you'll see on their year-end report, they will list a telephone number in terms of what in-kind contributions are from the state party. 2.7 million or whatever the number might be. Um, and that's because parties can raise money at $5,000 uh, per person. So if you give $5,000 to the party committee, the party committee more than likely is going to use it to try to get their standard there elected. Can the federal party make contributions to the state party? That's a bit more tricky. Um, so the technical answer to your question is no. The federal committee cannot give money to the state party committee. Each state party has two accounts. They have a state account and a federal account. So as I, as an individual, can give $5,000 to the state account of the state party, and I can then give $10,000 to the federal account of the state party. That money that is in the federal account is ostensibly to be used for federal candidates. But if the party runs an ad, and that ad says, elect Senator Warren, don't forget about candidate X who's running for state senate. Federal rules require that that money be spent out of the federal account because it's a federal candidate. And their rules trump our rules. So. A, a state candidate could piggyback with the federal candidate and the federal funds pay for it. And the federal funds pay for it. I've seen that. It's not widespread, but I have seen it. And it's up to the, I mean, the parties know this, right? So right. They, they know how to do it. And they're, they're not going to do it for just anybody. Are there any problems with our, with I the feel like I'm on the witness stand. Can I just say that? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't take an oath or anything. I'm uncomfortable. We can put you under office. Has your time expired yet? Nico has a question. What's that? Nico. Go ahead, Nico. Are there any rules governing when cities can do relative to other cities? Like, for example, No. 
There are some cities that have tried. I don't know anything about the lobbying end of the deal. I don't, I don't deal with that at all. I, I, I read somewhere uh, in the Globe the other day that you now have to register as a lobbyist in, in Boston, but I don't know the first thing about it other than what I saw in that story. Um, some cities and towns occasionally will call us and tell us that they want to enact their own campaign finance law. We tell them to talk to their uh, city solicitor or their town council. And if they're going to do a bylaw, to go to the Attorney General's office, their local government division, and make sure that whatever they want to do passes muster. Is that, is that helpful? Uh, there are no limits, if I understand your question correctly, there are no limits for, for uh, ballot questions at any level, state level or local level, nor could they be put in constitutionally uh, under a, a case I believe is Mass Citizens for Life versus, no, Bank, Bank of America versus Bilotti, um, I think is the one that talks about ballot questions. Uh, and in ter again, in terms of the lobbying at the state level and what they do, I, I don't know anything about that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Other questions? Is there any other? Like, uh, Go ahead. This has been very educational, and you know, I think we we'll want to uh, continue the dialogue. So, any thoughts or advice that you might give to uh, this commission? And I guess most specifically, you know, the subcommittee that we got, uh, if you heard us just, uh, you know, set up, uh, doing further research and fact finding, uh, any suggestions of how we might proceed? I think it wouldn't hurt you to invite in for conversation, maybe not testimony. Some of the, f and I don't know if they'll come, but some of the folks who actually do the raising and the spending. You can probably get you know the data from what corporations or what super PACs uh, they're from, and they might be willing to have a conversation with you about it uh, and how they do what they do. I'm not I'm not you know on the front line devising a firewall to ensure that OCPF doesn't come after me because on the one hand you know we gave a candidate money and on the other hand we want to do an independent expenditure for him or her. But I think it's important. You know it's great to talk to bureaucrats. I'm a proud bureaucrat and been there a long time, but I'm, I haven't been on the front lines in a campaign in an awful long time, uh, which, by the way, is wonderful. I haven't written a campaign check in 32 years um, and don't intend to do it anytime soon. But if you don't talk to them, I think you're missing an opportunity to make sure that you understand the entire depth of the issue. Mm -hmm. Uh, not to put someone on the spot, but Jeff, you might know better than I do. <laughs> Crickets. <laughs> um, I, I, you know, I don't. I'm not going to give a name. Um, I, I can point you to where you can find that information, uh, and, and maybe deal with some of the consultants out there. But I, I'm not going to yeah. put out a name for, for public consumption. Yeah, could you uh, could you do that, uh, Mike, and uh, point us in the right direction? Yeah, and sure. then just. Uh, on behalf of my uh, fellow commissioners, uh, in expectation that we might eventually get to this point, I had reached out to uh, a fellow who I know does the fundraising, did the fundraising for Governor Deval Patrick. Mm -hmm. And he'd be happy to come in and spend time with him, this fellow named Sean Carr. Uh, and he also knows others that uh, do similar things, both for Democrat and Republican. And uh, so if you want, I could follow up with him and see if he'd be willing to come in. I'm sure he had, I am sure he'd be willing to accept an invitation for a conversation if we want. He's from Springfield, then, uh, right? Mike, if you could point us in the direction of some additional ones, that would be swell. Is Sean from Springfield, Bill? Uh, Sean Curran has been uh, Sudbury? Sudbury, oh, okay. Sudbury. Uh, not the Al Sean Alan Solomon might be. Uh, Alan Solomon would be a good mm -hmm. uh, candidate for this. Yeah. And you might want to talk to some candidates who, who you know, have an interest in this and, and what they've gone through. I mean, we've had a number of situations with <clears throat> excuse me, where PACs, because they didn't know the rules, regular PACs made excess contributions uh, in kind. 
we've had to deal with that. Um, there's, you know, every, everyone understands the rules a little bit differently, and my job is to try to enforce them all equally. It's like that strike zone. That's great advice. Yeah. Are there any particular problems that your office has faced, has faced specifically as a result of Citizens United? No. No. Okay. Is there anything else that you'd like to uh, tell us can about? I just jump, can I just jump in? Since we've talked a lot, I've asked you a few times about citizens, yeah. um, but haven't explicitly asked you about the Speech Now decision, which, as you know, is the one that opened the floodgates for the super PACs. Yeah. Can I just ask that same question? How has Speech Now affected your ability to enforce our laws? I don't think it has. I mean, I don't think any. It, once these court cases are decided, uh, we figure out a regulatory scheme to make them work, and we just go from there. And we try to transmit that information and, and those schemes to everybody so that they understand. And we try to get, you know, my goal is to get as much disclosure as quickly as possible and get it up on our website so that everybody can see what they need to see. Okay, I'm, I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking Thank now we might, we might want to move on to get some public testimony. We have a full room of... Can I just ask one more thing before Mike okay. comes away here? So can you just give us a sense from your point of view how your office thinks about quid pro quo corruption? How, when you say how we think about it, I mean, we, we think it's illegal. <laughs> but I mean, how, how would you define it? Is it one of those things that, you know, you, you know it when you see it? Or uh, how, how do you... How do you um, determine whether or not you've, in fact, encountered a situation of quid pro quo corruption? Um, well, no one's ever going to admit that to me. And I don't, I don't think I've ever really seen it. But, and it is a case, you know, I don't focus on the next result. I focused on the first result. I think the next result, that the quid pro quo stuff is where the AG would get involved. If I thought that the money was given for the purpose of getting some kind of a vote. Um, I would probably immediately refer that to the AG. Because that's our big stick. You know, I, a lot of people think that we can actually do the fining. We can't. All of the fines that we do are negotiated settlements. Because our big stick is to refer something to the AG for prosecution. Do you have information on the um, cases that you have referred to? I'm sorry. What, what were we? I'd like to invite, at this point, the public to ask questions, some questions of Mr. Sullivan before we, uh, before we, before he leaves. And so, is there, would you like to ask Mr. Sullivan a question? Sure. I was sure. just wondering if that's doc documented for the public. What cases that you have referred to the AG? Um, all the cases that have been resolved are on our website, um, I think. And and if they're not, there's probably been enough press that a simple Google sh Google search. And I can give you an example. Wilkerson, uh, John Bonomo. Uh, we referred the uh, Thornton Law Firm case, which uh, was referred at, at the federal level as well. They deadlocked on their vote. Um, my vote was to send it to the AG. The AG referred it uh, because there was a potential conflict on her part to the Essex County DA, um, who did a huge forensic review and really couldn't come up with anything concrete. Um, there are little cases that we send to the AG sometimes that you would probably not care about, but because the person that we're dealing with is uncooperative, I send it anyway, because that's our stick, um, and that's how, I, that's how I get people to the table. Sure. Could you tell us your name? Uh, my name is 